All right. Next section deals with specific heat. That's section 2.5 in your book. So specific heat is uh, going to again deal with our heat or our energy. Okay. One thing to distinguish or kind of briefly mention again. So we have our heat of fusion and our heat of vaporization. So these, this is the amount of energy that's required to actually do a phase change. So a change of state between the solid and the liquid. That's our heat of fusion. Or between the liquid and the gas. And that's our heat of vaporization. Okay, but we also have to put in a certain amount of energy to get, say, our liquid, if we're thinking of water, we have to put in energy to get that up to its boiling point. Okay, so if we think of our ice cube, okay, we have a frozen piece of water, okay, we have to heat that water up until it gets to its melting point, okay, that takes a certain amount of energy. When we do the change between a solid and a liquid, that amount of energy is our heat of fusion. But then we still have to warm up that liquid up to its boiling point in order to get it to go from a liquid to a gas. And that heating up of the water, so not doing a phase change, but actually increasing the temperature, has an energy associated with that. And that energy is the specific heat. So our specific heat is the amount of energy or heat, remember we can use those interchangeably, necessary to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. So just like uh, our heat of fusion and heat of vaporization, every substance had their own value for those. Okay, Every type of substance has its own specific heat. And I shorthand specific heat, uh, just a S and an H. So basically, um, our specific heat, this is going to be, this is associated with a raise, an increase, or lowering. Okay, remember, energy that goes in is the same that's going to come out. So energy is associated with a raise or lowering of temperature. The units of specific heat, we have joules per gram per degree Celsius. Or again, since we're talking about energies, we can talk about calories per gram per degree Celsius. And the equation for this is our energy or our heat is equal to the specific heat times the mass times our change in temperature, okay, or delta T. So this little triangle here, 
Uh, it's not actually a triangle, it's a delta. It's a Greek letter. Okay. And delta T is basically where we take our final temperature minus our initial temperature. Oops. So T final minus T, T initial, basically our difference in temperature. These are equations that you will want to know. So on an exam or on the cumulative final, this is an equation you're going to want to have in your memory banks. I have values of specific heat for each uh, component substance, those will be given to you. You don't have to memorize any tables um, or anything like that. All right. So specific heat. There are two ways, okay, two um, ways to use specific heat. In other words, two different types of questions that I can ask you. The first one is to be able to calculate how hot an object will get if we expose it to a certain amount of energy. The second question is that we can uh, calculate how much heat is necessary to raise the temperature by a certain amount. Um, there are examples in your book that you can work through, um, as well as QMP dealing with this, calculate how hot the object, so basically calculating, um, you're calculating T final. Okay, what is that? Uh, what I'd like to do is show you an example, uh, more commonly, is, is how we use uh, the second one. So basically, if we know how much we have to increase the temperature wise, uh, how much energy is that going to require? So we want to know how much energy is needed to increase the temperature of 75 grams of water to 5 degrees Celsius. So basically, we want to increase our temperature 5 degrees Celsius. We don't really care what temperature it's at. Okay? We're just going to increase wherever it was at. We're going to add 5 degrees Celsius to that. So what we want to do is we want to follow this equation here. So our heat, our energy, is going to be equal to our specific heat, and we want the specific heat of water. Okay, Remember, each individual substance has its own specific heat. Uh, the specific heat of water, you can look this up in 
uh, your book. Your book has a table of specific heats. This would be something that would be given to you in a problem. Um, but the specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram per degree Celsius. And remember, when we have these multiple units here, um, we can use this as a conversion factor. If you can't remember your equation, just look at this as a conversion factor. But remember also that when we have units in the denominator and multi-units, that there are already values uh, associated with this in that we have 4.184 joules per one gram per one degree Celsius. Okay, so we don't want to plug numbers in here because we already have numbers uh, assigned there. There's always a one. So we want to take our specific heat value, or 4.184 joules per gram per degree Celsius. We want to multiply that by our mass. So we have 75 grams of water and our delta T. Okay, we have five degrees Celsius. So my grams cancel, my degrees Celsius cancel, and I have joules left, which is a unit of energy, so I have that equation set up correctly. So let's take our calculator. We have 4.184 times 75 times 5, and I get 1569. So it's going to take 1569 joules of energy to increase 75 grams of water by five degrees Celsius. Definitely work through uh, as many QMP as you have time for. Uh, definitely work through the Sapling Learning site. Make sure that you get this concept under your belt of what specific heat is and what it means. Uh, before you go on and start combining the, the concepts of both uh, 2.4 and 2.5, and that's where we're gonna combine specific heat as well as uh, heat of fusion and heat of vaporization.